there, good morning. Is this working? Can everybody hear me? Great. We are so pleased to be here today, and the dialogue that's happening is the dialogue that we have every single day, so it's so nice to be with a group of folks who think about the same things that we're thinking about. Um, we have just a short bit of time with you today, and um, for those of you who don't know, Strayer University has been around for over 125 years, has always been around to serve working adults who didn't have time or ability to get back to school full time. So that's always been our mission. Um, that space is a little more crowded than it was 125 years ago. But uh, what we're trying to do as we see more and more students go online, so 90% of all of our students are studying in the online format. And while we've always had online as something central to what we do, this trajectory is just, the curve has been steep. Um, so we thought we'd come today to share with you a little bit about what we're trying to do to reinvent the online classroom and the results that we're seeing, which we, we are very, very proud of. So with me today is Nicole Cattell. Nicole leads our Strayer Studio work, which is our documentary film unit. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about what that means and how that translates into learning. And then Crystal Robinson, who is one of our fabulous Strayer University students who's here with us today. We are so <laughs> delighted that she's here. Um, and. Uh, but before we get started, I think what we'll do is if we could roll the clip that shows you a little bit about what it is we're up to. Get ready, cause here I come. Gonna move the mountain. Gonna touch the sky. I believe that we all have great stories within us. Look it right in the eye. Fashion is a lot of glitz, a lot of glamour. But behind all of it, for me, it's run by Excel. When we switched from analog to digital, I had to embrace that the old way of doing it is over with. Technology is moving. I'm self-identified as an inner city kid. I grew up poor. What my parents taught us was that if you have an education and you work hard, you're gonna go places. I was incarcerated for 21 years for a murder I did not commit. When I was in prison, writing saved my life because when I wrote, I was free. I think there's power in stories, period. What are we all made of? We're all made of stories. No one can ever say to me, you can't do it, because I can say to them, yes, I can. Get ready, cause here I come. So that is just a preview of some of the stories that we are putting inside of our classroom. These are mini documentary films. Think of them as video case studies about real people who have real challenges or real professional successes, and we build our learning around these characters. And I'm gonna ask Nicole to talk about that in just a minute, but the idea is, the challenge that we had, as all many of you may be facing if you're educators, is that you know, we used to have the attention of students for four hours in a classroom or two hours if it was two times a week, and now suddenly we have to meet clock hours and we still have to keep people engaged in front of a computer for four hours. Like, who does that? Nobody does, nobody does anything for four hours anymore, really. Um, and so the idea was, how do you get them to stick? How do you get them to stay, be interested and engaged in learning? So we thought, we literally brainstormed as a team, well, what keeps us interested and engaged in learning? And it was sort of these episodic, whether it was a podcast or it was your favorite television show or it was something in your community that you couldn't wait to get to every week. So we're like, how do we do that? So we literally said, let's try story inside of our classrooms. Let's hire a team of documentary filmmakers and let's try to make this work and see, if, see what happens. Um, and it's working, I will tell you that. So um, I thought I would ask Nicole to talk a little bit about how that works. How do you take this documentary film and actually make it learning and make sure you're not um, hampering the academic outcomes? Right. Hi. Okay, good. I uh, just wanted to see if this is working. So basically, um, the process that we go through in creating a story-driven learning experience for our students is we start with the learning outcomes we, we, uh, that are aligned to what the program has decided and defined that students need to be learning in the classroom and, and what the market is looking for for, for student learning. Um, and then we, begin, then we bring, we match up learning designers with, with our producers, our storytellers, our documentary filmmakers, and they start to brainstorm how do, uh, how do we bring this learning, this learning activity or this concept to life and demonstrate how it plays out in the real world. So we do know with adult learners, which is why I think we would take a documentary instead of a 
uh, scripted scenario, for example, as a case study, because adult learners want to see how academic concepts are relevant, how they play out in, in the real world. So we have, so anyway, back, we pair up our learning designers with documentary filmmakers, and they begin to brainstorm. And uh, just some of my favorite examples about how we bring an academic concept that could be, frankly, very boring, how we bring it to life in a kind of creative way, if I do say so myself. Um, we talk about the story of Manny Fresh. Manny Fresh is a DJ and music producer. And we were making a, a course on digital literacy, actually. And we wanted to talk about file arrangement, file storage. Giant snooze fest. But one of our producers thought, well, I mean, not necessarily snooze fest, but it could be. One of our producers thought, well, let's profile a musician um, who has to, who's working in a digital space. How do they manage the thousands and thousands of files that they work, collaborate with other musicians across the world. So we tell the story of Manny Fresh and the whole transition from analog music to digital music and how he works on the cloud now and how he manages his files. That's one of my favorite examples. And for marketing, we profiled, um, well, actually, I'll talk about Allie K. Natural because we talk about her a little bit later. Um, in our Business 100 class, um, we were talking about business operations. How do we teach operations? So one of our producers found uh, an entrepreneur um, who started a natural hair care product company, and she was making you know, her own um, hair products in her kitchen, started with 10 bottles, and she also was a vlogger and got the word out about, and a bu created a buzz about her product, got to pitch it to Target, and is now doing um, $3 million a year in business with Target. So how did she operationalize that transition from 10 bottles to $3 million a year? So we use her as a case study as well. Should I keep going? No, I just, I wanted to actually, no, no. Um, more, no stop minutes. storytelling, please, thank you. Um, but I wanted to, this is so interesting, the words that are just on the screen up here. Um, in Jeff Bezos' annual letter to shareholders, which was published recently, these words were almost mimicked by him. I'm not gonna say that, you know, but we, we've been using this for two years now, and his letter was basically saying, PowerPoint is dead, the way people listen and learn is dead. You have to go back to the oldest form of learning, which is storytelling. So with that, I'd love to ask Crystal, who is one of our undergraduate students and who has had the opportunity to experience some of the Strayer stories, tell us about how, how you learned through Story and Business 100, for example. Well, for me, it helps bring the content together. You know, Strayer is designed for the working adult. So to come home, I know I have to study. I don't want to just read. So to have this video to bring everything to life, it really makes it a lot easier for me and a, a lot of other adults as well. Um, and you can always come back to the content after you do your reading. If you can't really understand the literary context of the reading, you can go back to the video to kind of bring the content all together. Uh, really nice. Is there a particular story in Business 100 that you would want to share with the group and what it meant to you? Yes, and Nicole already touched on it briefly, but the founder, Rochelle, of Allocate Naturals, it touched me to my heart because, for one, this was my first class coming back to school as an adult after 20-something years. And to see this woman who looks like me to be so young and successful, it really got me in my heart. And it got me to understand that I know that I can do this. If she can do it, then I can do it. The entrepreneurship, the thing that I want to go for. My father's who's an entrepreneur, you know, for over 30 something years. When it comes to education, it is your foundation for everything that you're going to do in life. And I try to get my girls to understand that, my three teenage girls. So for them to see me, back in school with Strayer, and then for Strayer to have the structural context that they do with the videos, it helps out a whole lot. That's great, thank you. So all of that is great, right? So we have story inside of our classrooms, but what does it mean and how, does, how has it transformed what it is we're trying to do? So these are our results in any pilot term where we've rolled out a new course and we have 24 that have these stories in it, what impact did it have on our student learning outcomes? Strayer University is challenged with things that I think a lot of universities are challenged with, and that is adult students don't stick. They're too busy, they have other things going on. So these are average across every pilot quarter. This is very significant. This is thousands of students that we're talking about here, but start rate, attend rate, drop rate, at risk, chichas are credit hours earned versus credit hours attempted. This is, these are our measures of success. And then continuation. These are the lifts 
test versus control. When we put story in, no change to anything else, instructors otherwise, against the other sections of that same course. So we are seeing significant results for our students through the power of story. So that's one of the in innovations that's happening at Strayer related to this dialogue today that we wanted to share with you. And um, we're happy to, we'll be around to talk. We don't have a, a question and answer session during this period, but I just wanted to thank you all for allowing us to be a part of this important dialogue today. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.